Welcome to the Stalls Heat Press for Profit podcast, a show designed for people who are trying to make it in their heat print hustle. I'm your host, Josh Ellsworth, and today we're excited to welcome Bob Ewald, business owner of Fresh Horizons Group. Bob has an interesting business that has revenue streams in coffee and t-shirts, two of my favorite things. Fresh Horizons Group is having a ribbon cutting tomorrow to open the doors of a new location, so it's a perfect time for us to hop on the line to talk about his business. Bob, it's great to have you on the show. Can you spend a minute or two telling our listeners a little bit about yourself and your business? Sure. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be on here with you, Josh. Um, so I'm a 20-year I'm a uh, entrepreneurial junkie, if you will. I've owned companies for, for 20 years um, and recently got into the, the custom apparel and promo industry. Um, and as you alluded to, that started or stemmed from uh, a coffee company that we have uh, as well. Uh, that company was, uh, was originally founded to uh, do fundraising for nonprofits in our local area. And we had, a, we had a couple of them come to us and say, hey, this is doing really well. Can you do a t-shirt fundraiser for us as well? And being a serial entrepreneur, I said, sure, let's, uh, let's do it and uh, jumped in with both feet and one thing led to another and uh, out of out of a couple of iterations of that uh, Fresh Horizons group was birthed and it's now a uh, it's a it's a standalone company that uh, is a custom apparel wide format printing and uh, promo company excellent and um, I guess for for the benefit of our uh, listeners I'd like to give you all a quick overview of the show so the format of this is simple Bob and I are going to talk. We like to host casual conversations with apparel decorators like Bob, trade ideas, talk through successes and challenges, um, all while allowing you to be the fly on the wall. So uh, with that in mind, Bob, uh, how long has the t-shirt side of the business been open? We launched that uh, January 1st of 2019, so nine months. Nine months. Okay, excellent. And uh, so uh, do I understand correctly, like with the ribbon cutting, you're just moving into a, a retail space? Correct. Yeah, we uh, we moved it out of our home um, here about four months ago into a super small office. We rapidly outgrew that. When we brought in uh, the the new wide format printer, it really maxed out the office space there. Um, and fortunately, literally two doors over uh, from where our original space was was the new space. And we so we're acclimated here now. And uh, thought it was a, we kind of understand a few of our systems and a few of our processes pretty well and thought it would be a great opportunity to uh, to do the ribbon cutting with a couple of local chambers of commerce. Great. Yeah. And that's a great way to uh, generate a buzz and really announce yourself in the community. So uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, nine months in. Uh, that's pretty early in the process uh, to invest in a wide format printer, but I know you're an experienced entrepreneur. So what were the uh, criteria or the business uh, decisions that drove you into making that investment so soon? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so we started off with, uh, with a couple of Sawgrass uh, uh, printers and uh, um, a, a vinyl cutter. <clears throat> and we, when we started to look at like, how can we expand this uh, and, and offer a lot of different things with, with a, a limited amount of an investment. And I know wide format printers are expensive, but in the grand scheme of things, they're, it's an affordable investment concerning what it can do. So that was the big deci decision um, there is. When we look, because we looked at like DTG machines, embroidery machines, uh, screen print equipment, um, and we settled on the wide format printer because it gave us the greatest ability to offer many different things to our clients, whether it's printing on stalls, HTV products, or, uh, or, you know, running a banner, um, printing some stickers, car decals. It really gave us a very wide, uh, wide breadth of, of offerings that we could, that we could bring into the company with the, a similar investment to any one of the other processes I had mentioned. Good, good. And so uh, from a uh, metric standpoint with kind of what you're measuring, I, I would assume, and this may be incorrect, but I would assume that you're focused on increasing the uh, number of items you can sell to a particular customer. So rather than just selling them more t-shirts, being able to uh, be more of a one-stop shop and a complete solution for them. Would that be accurate? Yeah, that's that's 100% accurate. Good. So making more uh, 
I guess, higher value uh, current customers, of course, focused on new customer expansion, but the easiest uh, folks to sell to are people that already trust you and do business with you. So that's, that's great. Um, now, are you leveraging all of these products um, still in a fundraising uh, context like you imagined at first, what really drove you into the business? We do offer a little bit of a fundraising option, um, but what we found it was it was just as easy. It was actually easier to to tell people, hey, listen, we we can make you a, a one T-shirt, or we can make you a hundred. If you need pens, we can do that. If you need a banner, we can do that. And it really opened up our market, where before we were primarily targeting the nonprofits and local organizations that wanted to do to do fundraising. So by by kind of taking that veil down and still having it available it opened us up to a lot of other opportunities. Good, good. And how are you uh, attracting customers? How uh, how do you sell today? Do you have salespeople or uh, mainly attracting them through marketing? Uh, a little bit of both. Um, so we were using uh, social media quite a bit. Um, and then I, I myself and one other person are, um, are out as outside salespeople as well. So um, it, it's for us, being 20 years of, of being in the community already with other companies I own, um, there's a lot of a lot of contacts that are already available. So it's it's a fairly warm conversation. Um, but wanting to wanting to expand beyond that is why we joined the chambers of commerce and uh, are starting to do more outside marketing, whether it be some uh, some social media through Facebook, Instagram, and a little bit of Google. Um, Google has been has proven to be quite expensive, but um, we are seeing some traffic from it. Good. And do you manage the marketing campaigns, or is that something you have uh, with another staff member or outsource? Yeah, we we brought in somebody that um, that will share the role of uh, doing sales as well as helping to manage the social media side of it. Good. Good. No, I think that's a good move. I uh, spoke with another entrepreneur that's had a, a long-term business on the apparel side and uh, he was struggling in his local market kind of to get to the next level and uh, in speaking with him just at a trade show he mentioned that his best hire uh, that he's made for his business in the last two to three years has been somebody specifically to focus on uh, the inbound leads through marketing on social and through uh, even Google AdWords but it's uh, it's really helped them so I assume you're seeing um, are you measuring the lead count that comes in or like uh, what happens when, after you get an inquiry in the sales process? Yeah. Um, we, we are beginning to track that. We're finally, we just started launching those here in the last, uh, 60 days or so. Um, so again, it's, it's a brand new company. We're, we're having to learn how to build systems in my other company. There's lots of systems already in place and it's, um, uh, things work very smoothly there here. We're having to, to learn how to build systems around that. Um, so as a lead comes in, um, we, I usually will either handle it myself or hand it off to, to our outside rep, um, depending on, depending on kind of what they're looking for. She has some more experience in, in one part of it where I, I can make decisions in, uh, across other aspects of it. So it kind of depends on what that, what that client's looking for. Good, good. No, it makes sense. Um, but the important thing is the lead comes in, you have a way to route it depending on uh, the level of interest. It sounds like you have a little bit of a uh, specialty knowledge, whether that's with yourself or with the outside rep to be able to get it in the right hands and move it uh, down the field, as I like to say, to uh, purchase. Absolutely. I, I think one of the things that we try to do um, is respond right away. You know, if we get a, if I get a lead at seven o'clock at night, you know, and it comes through our email system or what have you, um, that quick response, um, even if it's just like, Hey, we're out of the office, but thanks for, re you know, thanks for requesting a, a proposal. We try to respond as quickly as humanly possible to those, uh, so that they know that it just didn't go off into the nether, you know, Netherlands of the, uh, of the internet. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I read, uh, cause I manage sales here at stall. So this is my uh, day job as well as uh, teaching people how to heat print apparel as the sales process. So. Uh, I read an interesting stat um, a few years back that how uh, conversion rates increase dramatically if you can get first response to that inquiry uh, really within, uh, they, they did it if driv driving it down all the way from a minute standpoint to hours to days and then beyond, and the uh, conversion rates increase dramatically if you're quick to respond, because odds are if they're 
if they have a request for a proposal or a job, maybe they're shooting that out to two or three potential decorators at once. So it's uh, speed is the name of the game. Absolutely. And we found over the years that that, that quick response, they're, they're ready to buy. Usually by the time they're they're re- they're sending a request in in their mind they're ready to buy so if you can hop in while they're still actively in in buying mode in their mind you uh you can form that relationship and and move them through the sales process fairly quickly yeah and so um i know that when we did uh, some of the pre-show uh, exchange back and forth you mentioned uh wanting to go deep on sales so i assume like when you measure the success of the company uh, one of the key metrics for you is top line sales growth. What other um, things are you measuring uh, from a success standpoint? You know, I, that's a that's a great question. And the honest answer is we're not measuring things very well yet. Um, I don't I don't have a, have a clearly defined answer for that. That's all right. So uh, do you measure, uh, I assume, top line sales uh, month to month and, and uh, kind of track against that? Or or how, how does that look for you? Yes, uh, we do track that. Um, we're we're constantly watching. I, I guess we you know we look at the amount of leads coming in, uh, and, and then uh, what that's equating to in in sales at the you know on the other side of it. Um, we just we don't have real well defined metrics on either you know like uh, conversion ratios and things like that just yet. Um, we can I can tell you that. Uh, when you have a good relationship with somebody or you can build rapport, we seem to close more of those. But again, we're dealing with a lot of warm leads at this point still. Yeah, that's that's a good uh, good problem to have is to be dealing with warm leads, <laughs> especially because uh, you're bringing connections to it, as you mentioned earlier, and that makes a big difference. So if I could give you uh, one recommendation, you can go crazy and really overanalyze, but uh, definitely um, a very uh, simple CRM or even a process um, to be able to manage uh, leads in, and then uh, really uh, conversion rates uh, will help you to get in front of the actual revenue number. And, and you'll start to really know, especially as you start to add salespeople and scale the business, if we have um, this salesperson uh, converting 50% from every inquiry, and then really documenting the reasons why you're winning and the reasons why you're losing, uh, that's one of the most valuable things for me is so we can even adapt our offer uh, to be able to service customers better. So I would I would highly recommend that uh, as, as a next step from a process standpoint for your business. That's awesome. I, I really appreciate it. Do you have any specific CRMs that you're, you're fond of that you feel fit well within this industry? Uh, there are a variety of solutions that are out there. Um, my absolute favorite is Salesforce, but it tends to get expensive uh, on a per seat license basis as you grow. So that would be my uh, that would be my optimal solution would be Salesforce. Uh, here at Stalls, we've actually uh, been through a few of them and we ended up uh, building our own, but I know that's not um, uh, an option uh, for everybody. So I know Zoho is one that's uh, fairly inexpensive online. So that might be a great way uh, to get started. And I know they even do like a free trial period so you can test it. So that's Zoho.com. I'd probably recommend starting there. And as you get a little bit more uh, detailed and scientific about the process, you may want to look at Salesforce. From my other company, I am familiar with uh, Salesforce. I, I totally agree that is uh, that's an expensive pro- product, but uh, um, extremely extremely versatile and, and scalable as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess talk to me a little bit about um, some of the other questions um, or challenges that you think you're facing in your business you, that you want to uh, unpack a little bit with me today. Uh, anything else that comes to mind? Yeah, you know, I think one of the one of the biggest challenges that we've had because we jumped in, uh, you know, nine, uh, ten months ago, I didn't know anything. I didn't know Corel. I didn't know um, anything. I knew how to sell, um, and, <laughs> and so that I, you know, that gives, you, gives you a little bit of uh, uh, uncanny confidence if you're if you're a natural salesperson. You know, um, that that worked well. But having to learn the processes um, in in building building all those systems that's that's been a huge challenge. Um, and I think the other part is is figuring out ways with with low revenue to be able to hand stuff off um, and and find people that you can bring into the team to you know to be able to spread some of that. Um, 
that, those are some of the big challenges. Learning all the processes, learning, you know, whether it be heat printing, running the wide format printer, doing sublimation, um, that that in itself is is a full time job. Um, and uh, you know, so the, those are some of the probably some of the biggest challenges that that we're facing right now. Yeah, makes sense. So uh, funny enough, and, and I'm not sure what episodes these will publish in, but the lady I spoke with uh, on our first interview, she was extremely strong uh, in graphic design, uh, and you're extremely strong in sales. And I think it's the same for any entrepreneur in person, really, is you certainly have your strength and your skill set. I think uh, those two things, design, uh, getting good artwork, um, and then selling, are probably two of the most important things uh, to the business uh, and be able to run it effectively. Um, but figuring out what what to hire for first, uh, how to simplify processes, uh, what you can delegate, especially as an entrepreneur wanting to keep your hands on a lot of it because you know it'll be done right, uh, is always a challenge. So talk to me. I'd like to ask a couple follow-up questions first. Uh, how many people are in the business right now working full-time? Uh, there are three of us right now. Three. And so there's yourself, there's an outside salesperson. Is that a person on staff or? She, uh, she operates as an independent, um, but uh, works fairly closely with us. And then there's my wife as well. Okay, good. So that makes up the three. And then uh, your wife's uh, role in the business is uh, she handling, uh, you guys basically split duties or does she have a specific uh, task compared to what you focus on? Yeah, we we have. Uh, so I should have answered this more. We have four uh, because we do have a um, a small minority ownership partner as well, and they, uh, my wife and him, work with the finances and um, a lot of the back end operations. Uh, so when you know when a PO comes, uh, PO goes out, or or we receive inventory, things like that, those two are handling that part of it. Um, he he plays uh, he's playing a more and more active role, but he he started off as as an investor and is um, is growing um, his responsibilities as the company is growing. So I should have answered that a little bit more clearly. No, that's all right. And and what do you spend the majority of your time on? Like, what's a day in the life for you? Most of it is is sales. Um, I do some of the design work um, as well, uh, but it's it's just uh, you know con- connecting with. Uh, either existing clients or, or new clients, um, and then following up on leads, um, and just kind of overseeing that part of it, uh, and then coordinating with our, with our outside rep is to, okay, you know, this lead came in, um, how do we want to handle this? Uh, you know, so we, that's, that's my overall is, is primarily the sales and, and design side of things. Good. Who's actually making the product? That's where the three, um, my wife, our partner and myself, we produce the, we produce the product. Uh, so in, in all candidness, um, with it being a small order, uh, we produce those things in house. If it's a large order, um, we found, uh, an organization called ASI at, uh, at the same show, we bought some of our heat presses, some of the stalls heat presses, uh, we found them. So we outsource if it's, you know, if it's a large order for something, um, outside of apparel, we'll outsource that to uh, to an organization that's just more well equipped. So if it's a full sublimation shirt, um, like jerseys or something like that, we'll do that. If somebody needs 500 yard signs, we outsource that. But if somebody needs one, uh, you know, a dozen a dozen shirts with their their name on it um, or their logo or whatever, we produce those in house um, using Stalls products and um, and the equipment that we have. Good. No, uh, makes sense. And, and we're, uh, members of ASI exhibited all those shows, as you know. So I think that an organization trade organizations like that, uh, can be helpful. There's often mixed reviews on whether it's valuable to be a member or not. But I think for the company that understands, uh, outsourcing and not being able to scale the business without having to do everything yourself and really, uh, broaden, uh, the product offering, I think, uh, outsourcing is a great model because I'm guessing you're connecting uh, products that you would never be able to manufacture in house without a significant investment as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like today we uh, we had a thousand balloons that we had imprinted for a client delivered. You know, I mean that's uh, you know, and it was just it's kind of cool to say you know when somebody comes to you with something kind of off the wall, you're like, yeah, we can do that. 
Um, and it really, one of my things with this company was I wanted to be able to say yes. Um, that was, that was a big thing. I didn't want to, didn't want to limit us to one specific thing. I wanted to be able to say yes and then build systems and teams around what that meant. So, you know, that's where we started off with doing, uh, HTV on, on t-shirts and some sublimation on coffee mugs. And as we found more and more demand in the market for different things that led to the other investments, such as what we've already discussed with the wide format printer, um, and, and then joining ASI and, and being able to say yes to, to pretty much anything that somebody wants to put their name on. Well, I mean, it sounds to me, and I know you're, and, and I commend that you're looking for all, every little angle that you can improve, but I mean, from a, uh, process standpoint and hitting some of the basics with being able to outsource and uh, connect uh, people to where they're talented and kind of split the uh, workload. It sounds like you're uh, well on your way. So uh, do you feel like um, as far as like growing the business, is it just a matter of engaging more customers? Is it being able to make product quicker? Like what are those uh, key things that um, you need to be able to check off in order to say yes more often and have that opportunity? The answer to that is getting more opportunities in the door, um, wh whatever that uh, whatever that means, whether it be a, a real life lead or coming through our website or what what have you. Um, so more opportunities in, um, and then you know I, I did have a, kind of a, a take your breath away moment the other day. I walked into um, another local shop that we we outsource our embroidery to, and they're they're running. Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of around a million dollars a year in volume. And I walked in and I saw this immense amount of stuff going on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did we get into? Um, so <laughs> I, I think the other part of that is making sure that as we say yes to these things, that we quickly build systems of how that's going to be handled. Um, because it, if all of a sudden we're doing, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or we're, you know, we're getting out to those million dollar a year and beyond points. The only way that's going to be sustainable is to have good systems in place that we can teach people how to use. Um, you know, it's that, that, uh, you know, cause I, I can bring people in the door. Um, that's just my gift. Um, whether it be through marketing or, or face-to-face -face sales, but if we can't produce that product in one form or another and get it back out the door, um, in a quick enough time frame, we can kill ourselves. And, and I think sort of mm -hmm. developing those systems is going to be is going to be the key to to doing that. Yeah, you have it right. Creating something that uh, is built to scale while it's small is the easiest way to go. One of the biggest mistakes is uh, someone scales up their business and it's not uh, something sustainable. So they get so big, um, but they don't have the infrastructure, the documentation, the standard operating procedure, procedures to really be able to uh, sustain. And that equals disappointed customers and ultimately uh, major challenges uh, for future growth. So I think you're right is, is establishing that while it's still uh, small, that way you can build on that solid foundation and grow it out. So uh, that, that's an excellent observation. So just to, to kind of go a little bit more in depth, um, on your customer base and who it is. It sounds like you're approaching uh, your past contacts and, and pretty much anybody in the community. Are there any specific uh, markets that you're trying to uh, develop and target? Yes, uh, certainly right now we're taking anything that, you know, anything that's that's spending money um, that'll, that'll pay the bills right now. But our, our more direct focus are small to medium sized businesses um, that that need that consultative approach of how do they brand themselves um, being that we can offer being able to produce, put their name on pretty much anything. Um, we we've said that we, we provide that consultative approach. So these are, we're looking for companies that, that are just getting started to have a budget, um, but aren't so large that they're, that they're already committed to working with one of the large, uh, uh, one of the larger, media agencies. So we're, we're trying to find that, that sweet spot. You know, they probably already have a little bit of a logo, so we're not doing full in-house design, um, but we're able to take those things. They know, you know, they, they've got a couple of employees, so they need multiples of things, um, or and they're trying to grow. So having good promotional products that can back them up. Um, so that's the focus is small to medium-sized companies. 
Mm -hmm. No, I think that goes along with your ability to say yes. So it reminds me of uh, really an agency approach, but at the small to medium sized level. So I think uh, you've identified a nice gap there where you can uh, really sustain a customer once you uh, once you obtain them. Um, and I think that's that's really cool. Uh, I visited a shop many years ago, and it was a huge shop. And their tagline that they said, at least internally, was we're the world's largest mom and pop shop. And so even as they scale, uh, they kept that idea of that they can say yes to any job, that they can maintain sort of the small, personalized, consultative approach. Um, and that's why they were able to grow, because I think the you know, with the world of automation, you can uh, go too far and lose that personal contact. So it sounds like you're able to bring that into the process for your customers. Yeah, absolutely. The ability to to kind of hold somebody hold somebody's hand while they grow um, and be there as a resource for a long period of time is 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 the idea. Um, you know, so if they need five shirts because they've got you know one guy and he's out there mowing lawns, fabulous. Let's let's help you. But you know, in three or four years, when that company scaled, now they need a hundred shirts, or they need, uh, you know, ten thousand business cards, or whatever that is, to be able to still be that resource and have built that relationship, uh, and, and be able to supply them all the way along. It makes it easier for us from a customer uh, acquisition standpoint, and it makes it easier for the client. I mean, we're all cr humans are creatures of habit, right? So if they don't have to change because our company can't keep up with them then they're likely to stay. Um, and, and that's, that's something that, that we want to try and embrace as we go forward. Excellent. Thanks for that advice. So to our listeners, uh, you're hearing lots of great sales tips. It's clear that, uh, Bob has a strong competency in sales at his company. He's doing things right from a customer acquisition standpoint, uh, building, building, processes, focusing on acquiring customers and really focus on growing up customers through the business. So as uh, the customers that he's servicing grows, so the business does as well. So that's really exciting, Bob. A uh, couple other uh, things I want to talk about. One of the trends we've noticed, and, and of course, we're developing product towards this end, is our apparel decoration customers, which you would fit into, uh, growing through uh, client-specific e-commerce uh, sites with popping up uh, web stores that are focused around the customer. And I think it would be particularly uh, interesting in the fundraising space. Uh, have you started to dabble with that at all? Or are you familiar with that? We, we did. Um, one of the, um, and I, I um, as a segue back to you, I'm, I'm familiar, somewhat familiar with the Saul's product. And um, I wish it had been out six months ago uh, because we, we looked um, in my other company. <clears throat> we, have, like I said, we have systems and things in place, and that's the only way that company operates is with with good systems, good software, things like that. So we went looking for something, and we uh, we ran it against um, two of the biggest two of the biggest players in in that space. We ended up settling with a uh, um, with a decoration uh, specific software um, called Deco Network. Um, and they gave us a mm -hmm. great bit of, of flexibility to be able to add, you know, one-off products or, uh, and, and to be able to offer the ability to build fundraising, um, sites for our clients. Um, I saw what you guys were doing, um, at one, I think it was at the, uh, what was it? Uh, the DAX show you had mentioned it, or one of your team members had mentioned what was coming. And I'm like, man, I wish it was here today because we were making that decision as to what we were going to do. And now it launched. I'm like, that is a beautiful product that you guys are building. Oh, thank you. Well, it's, it's okay. I mean, we uh, support the other solutions as well. For us, it was more of a product of, uh, we saw a trend that customers that were growing were selling like this and everything in the industry seemed to point towards, uh, for livelihood in an e-commerce world, you needed to be able to create these web stores to be able to service your clients. And even if it's not a fundraiser, just to create more of a less of a transactional business and more of a, a loyalty business. And that technology piece of launching a client web store really makes yourself more than just a screen printer and embroider or heat printer, which is kind of what you're doing anyways, with the, with the logo and more of a consulting approach. But this is just an extra layer to that as you found. So I'm curious, how has uh, regardless of the platform, how has the concept 
worked for you on the t-shirt business side? It, it's it's worked really well. We've got we've got one uh, that we've got launched, um, and it's for a it's for a fairly um, fairly large organization. Um, it's a it's a youth softball team that raises money for um, for kids with cancer. So it's a really cool organization, um, and and the ability to have put a bunch of different product out there for them, um, and, and be able to allow them to touch a lot of people. Because yes, they they're a traveling team, um, but they are given the opportunity to if if they have a supporter that you know. So we're here in in the upper Midwest. Uh, um, right on the Illinois Wisconsin line, and but they may have people out in California or New York or whatever that would gladly buy a piece of their swag to support their organization uh, and support that fundraiser. And so, if we didn't have that uh, that platform available, they would never be able to reach those people. Um, and and that was uh, that was really really awesome to be able to to roll that out to them and um, and and uh, enable them to touch a greater uh, a greater amount of, of people. Yeah, that's a good point. It really delivers uh, reach, right? For whatever the organization is where they have someone that wants to support, it allows you to do it in a national or a worldwide way, uh, depending on uh, how far you want to go as a decorator. Uh, one of the interesting things in some of the conversations flowing back and forth on our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group is, I'm not sure folks are connecting that this is more than just a standard e-commerce solution. This is actually intended as a solution to launch a bunch of e-commerce stores, uh, potentially one for every customer you do business with. Um, so I guess my question would be, uh, what's held you back so far from doing it with more uh, customers? Um, <clears throat> to be to be completely candid, the complexity of doing it with the Deco Network system. Um, I do not have a, a background in in web development and as robust as their program is, I mean, and we fell in love with their back end. Um, and then these other mm -hmm. pieces were great. Um, but it, it is, it is a little bit complex, um, to build it. Once you get some templates created, it goes pretty good. Um, but getting those pieces in place first, that's kind of been the, been the holdback. And our focus has been going after, um, the, a lot of the other companies and, and as they've come on and they, they see what we can do, then going back to them and saying, hey, you know, would you like to have a web store for your, you know, for your staff or for your organization? So we're just, we've kind of come, we launched with one because we knew we had that, um, <coughs> excuse me, in our book of business. Um, and now that we've kind of, we're like, okay, it works. Now we're, we're going to start bringing that back to other, to some of our other clients. Okay, so there's a complexity, but really it's more that it's just in its infancy and, and you are going to uh, take it out in a deeper way. I just wanted to make sure the listener got that, that uh, these solutions are client specific. So it's very likely you could launch one for um, a local bank that wants to do a promotion. You could launch one for a softball team, a travel team, as we've mentioned, or you can just launch one for somebody in the community that wants to launch a fundraiser t-shirt for a cause or a, a special event. So tons of opportunities with these platforms. If, if the list as a listener, if you haven't looked at them before, whether it's our solution or another one, uh, it's the way e-commerce is going and it's a way for you to drive loyalty into your customer base. So definitely consider it. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you on that, Josh. That's, that's the thing that people miss with these e-commerce pieces is that they think, oh, I just have to have a website. No, it's the ability for you to scale your business at, at a very low cost. Even the most expensive platform out there is, is cheaper than, uh, you know, the traditional way of building a business. Um, and you guys have built an incredible product. Um, if people, you know, if, if people are looking for a solution, um, just right along with all the rest. And this isn't a plug. I mean, we are hundred percent loyal to stalls. Um, but the product that you guys have built for the e-com solution, it, it's robust enough to handle something that'll scale and nimble enough for uh, a new person to, to jump in and, and, and be able to build something. Okay. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you for the, for the kind words. And I think, uh, you know, at the heart of the question, uh, it's, I like to ask this of our salespeople and I think they hate when they have to drive somewhere with me because I always try to ask these off the wall questions. But uh, something we got asked as a kid is, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? 
Um, and, and you think about that for your business. And if you aspire to just be a t-shirt printer and you're a generalist, there's a million other people that just print t-shirts and it's going to be a competitive business. But if you desire to uh, be something different, offer this extra level of service uh, to your customer, like you guys are more of a, uh, I'd say a brand consultant with helping people upgrade their image and their logos. Now all of a sudden you're in a, a different playing field. And I think it really helps you to uh, create uh, a long lasting business and hopefully be able to sell product at a higher price point um, and not be viewed uh, in the red ocean, as we like to call it, with all of the other sharks swimming and fighting after the same business. So I want to uh, give you an opportunity, uh, Bob. I know we've talked through a ton of stuff and we're coming up on conclusion time here in about five minutes or so. Um, are there any other questions, whether they're technical, process related, anything um, that you want to ask or any advice even uh, that you want to offer to other listeners that are uh, aspiring apparel decorators or maybe existing ones? Yeah, um, I guess I guess uh, from an advice standpoint, it would be just try. Um, it's amazing what we can do um, when we, when we, when we believe in ourselves and just go out and try, um, like I said, I've been a serial entrepreneur for, for 20 years. I've tried a bunch of different businesses. Some have done very well. Some have failed miserably. Um, and that's okay. That's all part of the journey. Um, the thing I would, I would ask, um, it to you is you, you've seen companies grow dramatically. I mean, you've, you've been with stalls for a long time. You've seen how they've grown what is something that um, as a company is is scaling and growing what is something that we should be on the lookout for that you've seen you know okay this was a bump in the road with stalls or maybe some other opportunities that you've worked on in the past what is something that we should you know we should kind of have on our radar as we're as we're trying to grow and scale this company yeah that's a great question um, so I offer a couple uh, thoughts around it uh, one is uh, being agile, I think, is of critical importance in taking time to work um, on the business, not necessarily in the business, are, are two big pieces of advice I would offer. So what I mean is, uh, especially as a small company with a relatively uh, small number of employees, you can get very caught up in the day-to-day, uh, -day, and it's important, right? Because you got bills to pay, you have sales targets to hit, and, and those things are important. But I would say making sure that you make time uh, to get outside of the business, uh, travel to a trade show, or spend some time away from the business and really think strategically about where you're heading. So for me, that means defining the customers that you want to do business with rather than the customers that are just necessarily calling, because uh, I think you can be very intentional about the type of business that is uh, good for the company and what you want to go out and develop. And when you do that, you can create something a lot more relevant. And um, I definitely wouldn't say only focus on one customer type. You want to, uh, just like good investment, diversify uh, your risk, not put all of your investment into one category, because if that industry uh, has challenges, uh, you're going to have challenges as a business. So I would say uh, be specific uh, to your customer, know who it is, create specific offers and market specifically to them, but also have uh, different markets that you're serving at once. So typically I like to recommend three to five markets uh, that you're developing uh, just to really add some safety uh, to the business and protect it and give you opportunity uh, to grow. So I think that would be one of the things I've seen where people tend to specialize. Maybe it's in sports. And I think this year for the first time in 20 years, uh, or actually the first time ever could be, if, I, if I'm quoting it correctly, it's uh, team sports participation levels at the high school level declined year on year. So for companies in sports, that's a, that's a big issue. Um, also, uh, industries like sporting goods, uh, if they get disrupted, if there's like what we're looking at right now, if there's consolidation and private equity companies coming in and buying up space and competing, uh, you don't want to be a company that's just focused on sports in today's environment. You want to uh, be able to diversify. So I'd say uh, just that. I think uh, Dale Carnegie said it. Uh, don't put all of your eggs in one basket. That's that's some great advice. I, I was taking notes as uh, as you were sharing that. I really appreciate that. It's uh, it's not very often that a, a small business owner can ask uh, ask the head of a sales uh, head of sales of a large corporation, "Hey, how do you do this?" So thank you for sharing. Oh, no problem. And then the other advice I'd give to any uh, industry leaders or, or folks in our industry is uh, 
stay small and stay humble. <laughs> Have a small mindset um, and make sure you're connected to the industry. I think uh, one of the things that I've challenged myself to do, and many of us at Stalls, it's our culture, is to stay connected to the customer. Uh, because without you know small businesses, without startups, even somebody buying their first heat press is operating in a spare bedroom. Uh, we don't do that well. We don't know that business. Uh, ultimately, we're not here very long. So uh, I'm excited about opportunities like this to talk with entrepreneurs like you really understand your pains, probably can't offer always the best answers on the spot, but it helps it helps me to learn. And I think it helps everybody listening uh, to learn and get real life advice. So that's the purpose of this Heat Press for Profit podcast. Yeah, I, I love it. It's, uh, it's awesome. I think one other piece of advice I'd like to share um, because I'm on, I'm on the, I'm on the forum that you're talking about and, and several others. Uh, and that's that if you're getting into business, go out. And this was some advice that was given to me over 20 years ago when I started my first, my, my first company. And that was go out and buy the very best equipment that you can afford, even if it's a bit of a stretch. Uh, and the reason why is that it will, it'll be the cheapest investment that you make because uh, talk about uh, heat presses for a second, right? So Stalls makes some great heat presses. We, we own two of them. We own the, the hot tronics fusion uh, and we own the, the auto clam along with your, your, uh, your hat press. Um, there are, there are cheaper knockoff products out there that we could have probably saved half that money that we invested in and bought the the lesser quality product but what i've learned over the years is that 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 better quality product lasts longer and and ultimately saves the company money down the road it may be a, a bigger stretch or you have to wait longer to get started but ultimately you can make more money by having a higher quality piece of equipment it'll have less downtime and less uh less overall expense than buying the the cheap thing that lets you get started right away yeah, and I think also if it's outside of somebody's budget, um, I think it really gives them time to think about and develop a business plan before they enter. Uh, save, make sure you're committed, really vet your business plan over many months of savings. Because uh, we see so many customers that even buy a stall's heat press and go out of business because it's not the it's not the heat press, right? It's just the business plan and the strategy. So just along with that quality equipment, but also a quality plan before you invest. I think can go a long way. Good. Totally agree. So Bob, Bob, this has been awesome. I want to thank you for joining us. What a productive conversation. Uh, you all got to listen and learn from a serial entrepreneur that's entering the apparel space. And I think that's exciting. Uh, certainly a lot of great uh, sales ideas and advice. So we hope you as a listener picked up some valuable info. If you'd like to ask follow-up questions, just look for our show conversation thread over at our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, where you can network, share ideas with thousands of businesses aiming to make a profit with heat printing just like you. That'll do it for our show today. Thanks again, Bob, and hope everybody have a great day.